What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can use multiple custom cells in your table view. Now before we get started, I just want to apologize. I haven't posted a video in two weeks. I've been sick with the cold. Now that I'm better, I'm going to get back to my schedule of posting daily videos. So with that being said, let's fire up Xcode and create a new project as always and jump right into it. We're going to stick with a single view application, uh, call it whatever you'd like. I will call it multi custom cells. And as always, save it wherever you want. While Xcode does its thing, make sure you hit that like button below for daily Swift tutorials, iOS development, other tech thoughts along the way. And let's expand Xcode and we're ready to go. So what we're going to start by doing is first setting up our controller, then two types of cells, third, our storyboard, and we're going to tie it all together. So let's jump into our view controller. Now in here, we need to first create a table view. So we're going to create an outlet for our table view. We're going to call it, let's just call it table. We need to set the tables delegate and data source. Now, of course, we need to implement the delegate and data source as well. So we're going to do the table view delegate up here. Whoops. UI table view delegate. We're also going to take this and do the UI table view data source. Now in the data source, we need to define two functions and those are number of rows. We're going to return, let's return 10 for now. Uh, and we're going to have alternating types of cells. So we're going to have two different kinds of cells. And the first one's going to be type A, second one type B, and we're going to alternate them. We're going to have, let's see, cell for row at index. And we can leave this one open-ended for now because we haven't created our cell yet, uh, or our two cells. And actually, that reminds me, up here, we also need to register the cell, the nib rather, for the cell identifier. But we haven't created the cell yet. So let's leave uh, this as empty as well and go create two different cells. The way we're going to create cells are right click on this, new file, Cocoa Touch class, make sure it's a subclass of a UI table view cell. Let's call it first, make sure this is checked, and hit enter one more time. And we have these two new things for our first table view cell. Let's go through that process once more and create one more cell. We're going to call it second. Check the box. Hit enter once more. Now let's go to the first table view cell. And in here, we're going to create uh, two things. The first one is going to be a static let property, which is an identifier. And it's going to be a string, the same name as the cell. We use identifiers to register a cell to a table view. So having a static just makes our life a little easier in terms of doing it. We are also going to create a static function in here called nib, which will return the nib for this uh, table view cell. So we can say return UI nib. And in here, we're going to do nib name, which is the same name as this. And bundle is nil. And let's copy this whole jazz and go to our second table view cell. And we can paste it in here and just don't forget to update the actual strings. Uh, now let's head back to our view controller. And in here, let's register our cell. And the way we can do that is we want to say first table view cell dot nib. And we're going to register the identifier with it. 
which is first table view cell dot identifier. Copy this below, change this to second, change that to second as well. So now we're in business. We have our two cell IDs registered up here. We still have this function yelling, yelling at us basically to uh, return a cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to say var cell is a UI table view cell optional. We're going to say if index path dot row is even. If it's even, we're going to return the second table view cell. Otherwise, we're going to return the first table view cell. We're going to say cell equals table view DQ reusable cell. If I can spell DQ correctly today. With identifier for index path. So as I mentioned, for the even one, we're going to use the second table view cells identifier index path. And if it's not even, we're going to use the first one. And of course, we need to return the cell. So here we're going to basically say return cell. And make sure to add the exclamation mark, which is a force unwrap, because initially we defined the cell as a UI table view cell optional. And this, this uh, function expects a non-optional return value. Lastly, what we need to do is set up our storyboard. Uh, don't mind my phone going off repeatedly in the background. We need to set up our storyboard, uh, but we're, what we're also going to do is in the table view cell itself, let's set a background color just so we can discern the difference when we load up our table view. So let's say background color of the first table view cell is red. And the background color of this one is blue. Let's head to our main storyboard and drag on a table view on here and connect the outlet. So we're going to select this, find a table view, throw it on on, throw it in on our view controller. Let's connect the outlet to this by right clicking on this. We should see an outlet in here, which we do table connected to our table view. Let's add some constraints to this to make it take up the entire screen real estate. We're going to do zero, 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 zero. And actually the one thing I forgot to do is if we go back to our first table view cell, this identifier also needs to go into the XIB file for the cell. So open that up, open the side menu, and paste that guy in right there. And don't forget to do that for the second one as well. And I believe that's the last thing we'll need to do to get these two cells up and running. Now I went through all of this kind of fast, so don't, don't fret. I'm going to review it really fast, but hit Command R. Let's uh, see our app in the simulator. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. And it just compiles So give it a quick second to load. And we should see our table view in here. If we don't, we'll figure out what we messed up. Okay, beautiful. So we basically have a table view here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 cells. The two cells, while they look identical in what's in them, with the exception of the color, are two distinct different table view cells. As you can see here on the side, we have a first and a second table view cell, and we're alternating between them. So let's actually uh, put some stuff on the cell to make it a little more interesting and easier to see the difference. Let's come on in here and find a label toss it on in here and let's just leave it as label actually hit command r now i haven't applied constraints so it might do some funny business oh it actually doesn't okay so the blue cell which i believe is the second cell if i'm not mistaken uh has a ui label on it now so that's how you set up your table view with multiple cells 
So a, a, a good practical example I like to talk about when I do table view tutorials and discussions are, if you think of the Facebook app, their news feed is essentially a table view with a bunch of different kinds of table view cells. And you just need to create out those cells and you can basically create something that looks like a news feed. Um, that's exactly what they do. Nothing fancy going on whatsoever. Uh, that's how m most apps actually work that are feed based. So let's uh, let's review what we've done before we conclude this video. So we started with our view controller. We created an outlet in here for a UI table view. We registered two cells, particularly a nib for the cell. And for some specifics, a nib refers to the .xib file for that cell. Uh, with the identifier, we did two of them. You could have an unlimited number of these registrations for multiple cells. We specified the table view delegate and data source. We created extensions with the table view delegate and data source. We don't have a function in here, but you could implement did select row. And when you select a cell, this function gets called. Like so. The data source, we have two functions in here. One is specifying the number of rows, which is the actual number of cells we're going to return. The next one actually dequeues the reusable cell, either first or second, depending on the index paths uh, number being even. So if it's, of course, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., it'll be the second cell. Otherwise, it'll be the first cell. Uh, next, we created two different cells. Uh, they are subclasses of UI table view cell. We created a static identifier property so we can register it easily. We created a static nib function to return a nib object with this identifier. And we didn't mess around with any of these functions to configure our cell with the exception of the background color. Same business going on in here. The important thing to remember, which a lot of people forget and overlook, and I've done it myself several times, is make sure the identifier that you're registering with is also specified in your nib file, particularly in the identifier field on the right-hand side. Uh, and that needs to match up with the identifier that you have in the file. Lastly, we went to our main.storyboard. We dragged on a table view here. We connected it with the outlet from the controller, which should pop up like so. We applied some constraints to it, and that's about it. We built it and ran it in the simulator, and we got what we expected. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I do daily Swift tutorials and other development. Uh, drop a like below if you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments or if you hit an error along the way, also leave a comment. Always happy to help. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.